Labour has defended its plans to end the non-domicile rule that allows some wealthy UK residents to limit the tax paid on earnings outside the country. Ed Miliband said the non-DOM rules were indefensible and axing them would raise hundreds of millions in tax. But Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls was forced to deny contradicting himself after saying in January that scrapping the rule would cost Britain money. Chancellor George Osborne said Labour's plan had unravelled. The BBC's assistant political editor Norman Smith said the comments, in a BBC interview ahead of the election campaign, appeared to contradict what he and his leader were saying now about the party's most significant announcement of the campaign so far. Mr Osborne said they were an example of the economic confusion that would result from a Labour government. In other election news, the Conservatives are pledging resits for pupils with poor SATs tests results at the end of primary school. 140 senior doctors sign a letter in The Guardian suggesting the NHS is withering away and privatisation is threatening services. The Lib Dems pledge a £100 million prize fund for car makers to create low-emission vehicles as Miriam Gonzalez Durantes, Nick Clegg's wife, joins the campaign trail. UKIP leader Nigel Farage met the reality TV star Joey Essex on a visit to Grimsby to highlight its fishing policies. The English Democrats launched their election campaign, saying they plan to field about 35 candidates. 100 young voters grilled representatives of the main parties for BBC Radio 1 Newsbeat. Non-DOMs are defined as British residents who pay tax on their UK earnings but whose permanent home is deemed to be outside the UK and therefore do not have to pay UK tax on foreign income as long as they do not transfer it to the UK, instead they pay a charge of at least £30.000. 000 once they have been in the UK for seven years. High-profile examples reportedly include Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich and HSBC chief executive Stuart Gulliver. Former Conservative Deputy Chairman Lord Ashcroft gave up the status in 2010 to keep his place in the House of Lords after a change in the law barring non-doms from sitting in Parliament while architect Lord Foster quit the Lords at the same time. Some Labour supporters including businessman Sir Ghulam Noon also had non-DOM status in the past. In his autumn statement in December, Chancellor George Osborne announced a new £90,000 charge for people who are non-domiciled in the UK for tax purposes but have lived there for 17 of the past 20 years. The previous Labour government introduced a £30,000 charge for people resident in the UK for seven of the previous 10 years but who were non-domiciled for tax purposes. Under Labour's proposals, no new people will be able to claim non-DOM status after April 2016 while existing non-DOMs would have a short period to adjust their tax affairs. Temporary exemptions of about two or three years would be available for students and foreign workers seconded to the UK for a short period of time, in consultation with business and universities. In a speech at the University of Warwick, Mr. Mealyband said non-DOM status was an arcane 200-year rule, allowing a few people at the top to operate under different rules. He said, there are people who live here in Britain like you and me, work here in Britain like you and me, are permanently settled here in Britain, like you and me, were brought up here, but just aren't required to pay taxes like you and me. Mr. Mealyband said he did not blame non-DOMs who were only playing by the rules but he insisted, it isn't fair, it isn't just and it holds Britain back and we will stop it. The next Labour government will abolish the non-DOM rule. In a series of media interviews on Wednesday, Mr Balls endorsed the proposed changes, saying the clampdown could raise at least hundreds of millions of pounds and rejected claims it would lead to an exodus of businessmen. When we introduced tougher rules in 2008, people said people would leave the country, he told Radio 4's Today program. That isn't what has happened. In a BBC interview in January, Mr Balls said he would be tougher on non-DOMs but appeared to cast doubt on axing their tax status as a whole. He told BBC Radio Leeds, if you abolish the whole status, then probably it ends up costing Britain money because there will be some people who then leave the country. Asked on Wednesday afternoon about his earlier comment, Mr Balls said he had been speaking about the need to find a solution in relation to short-term visitors to the UK. He accused the Conservatives of throwing up a smokescreen around Labour's policy to hide the fact it would keep these unfair rules. 
Labour said that in January, it was considering whether genuine temporary residents should be allowed any future leeway and that Mr Ball's comments then were in no way inconsistent with what it was now proposing. Small print Mr Osborne said, Labour's policy is a total shambles. You have Ed Balls admitting it will cost Britain money and then when you look at the small print it turns out the majority of non-DOMs won't be affected so the headlines are misleading. The Conservatives said they had taken the right approach in increasing the annual levy on non-DOMs and would continue to tackle abuse of the existing rules through a pound 5 BN crackdown on tax evasion and avoidance. The Liberal Democrats have also pledged to increase non-DOM charges and reform eligibility criteria saying this could raise an extra £130 million. Leader Nick Clegg said the wheels are coming off Labour's announcement and in pursuing a headline they forgot that we must remain an open economy but of course not an economy that is open to abuse. The Green Party said the changes could not come a moment too soon while UKIP said aspects of the non-DOM rules were ludicrous but any reform must be thought through to ensure it didn't disadvantage the public finances.